Hello, and welcome to the first Studio 415 of the school year. On today's show, we're going to talk about the new events that are happening during homecoming. We'll tell you why lunch prices have gone up all over Nax. And we're going to take you behind the curtain of the fall play and much more. I hope you're ready. It's, it's time, time to, to enter, enter Studio 415. Welcome to Studio 415. I'm Seth Pennegrass. And I'm Caroline Chastain. Carroll High School is already three days into homecoming week, and there are a lot of new activities going on. But there are also some challenges involved in making this week happen. With our lead story, Studio 415 reporter Balin Height is here to shine some light on what goes into planning homecoming. From a concert before the big game to fireworks after, the end of Carroll's homecoming week is full of new surprises. This year, homecoming is going to be a little bit different than before. The people in charge of homecoming experienced many challenges during this week to make the event possible. Teachers and student council prepare weeks in advance to make homecoming a great week for all students. Student council member Peter Stillwell thinks student council's most challenging part is coming up with the daily dress up themes. Coming up with uh, spirit weekdays that uh, the people would really enjoy, uh, that's a difficulty because everybody, you know, is kind of over the dress up as an 80 year old or something like that. So really coming up with creative ideas for that. Thursday's dress up day is class color day and then bring out your school spirit on Friday with blue, white, and neon. The athletic department is also an integral part of making homecoming happen with some new ideas this year. Carroll Athletic Director Dan Gindner believes that adding fireworks to homecoming will make this week even more special. I hope it becomes a tradition um, and something that people enjoy. You know, it's probably going to be a, a 10 to 12 minute show. Um, it's not super long. It's not going to be your 4th of Fourth of July fireworks, but it's going to be every bit of a um, fun experience on a smaller scale. The athletic department is also adding to our traditional tailgate in the form of music. Carroll senior Jordan Bridges helped set up the concert, which will feature his older brother, Mickey Young. Um, for me being quote unquote a leader of Neon Nation, I feel that it's part of my job to come up with new things that we haven't done before. And I know that there's never been a live concert at tailgate, so I said, hey, why not? And uh, Mr. Gander was very cooperative in letting us do it during homecoming week. The concert will take place in front of the Natatorium at 5.30 during the tailgate. The concert will take place right out here at 5.30 while students wait to get their tickets punched to get into the football game. And don't forget about later tonight, the Powder Puff football game will take place right out here behind me. And then at the end of the day on Friday, Powder Puff cheerleading, and then you can't forget the homecoming football game. For Studio 415, I'm Balin Height. Thanks, Balin. The start of the 2016-2017 school year has been different in many ways, such as going one-to-one, -one, the new daily schedule, and many new staff. Studio 415 reporter Randy Zedek joins us in the studio to explain one more change that will have your wallet feeling lighter. The school board approved a change in lunch prices back in July. In this report, Studio 415 finds out why the cost of lunch went up and what students think about it. In the 2016-2017 school year, the price of lunch was increased from $1.70 to $1.80 for normal lunch. The salad bar was also increased from $2 to $2.10. The school is required by a USDA mandate to increase prices because the school has to be within a certain lunch price range to reimburse the price of a free lunch. For more information about why lunch prices changed, I talked to Leanne Kahneman. Um, prior to the new guideline changes in 2010, uh, that was not required, but that came into place um, with uh, the Obama administration, and that was impacted um, through that guideline change. Uh, before that, we had not raised lunch prices for nine years. Many students don't eat breakfast at home, but at school. Good news for them, the price of breakfast has not changed like the prices of lunch have. Although 10 cents doesn't seem like very much, we talked to some students to see what they thought about the price change. Uh, I didn't really notice it at first, but after a while, I saw like uh, the lunch uh, ladies sort of like ringing it up as like dollar eighty. I thought it was dollar seventy, but uh, didn't really pay much attention to it. I did not know the increase, and I think it's kind of dumb because there's a lot of parents that have to pay for the school lunches, and they shouldn't have to pay for more. Uh, the prices probably won't change what I buy at all because it's not that big of a deal to be honest. This change in lunch prices has not only affected Carroll High School, but all of NACS. The students aren't the only ones who saw a change in lunch prices, as the teachers have seen an increase in lunch prices as well. For Studio 415, I'm Randy Zedek. 
Thanks, Randy. In other news, Tuesday, November 8th is the date to mark on your calendar for the United States general election. But if you can't wait that long for some political drama, then the theater department's fall play will likely fill the void. I spent some time with the cast to find out what we can expect from the election. During the month of September, a play will be set up and performed by the Drama Club at Carroll High School. The play will be performed in a small auditorium during the dates of September 29th and the 30th. The play chosen for this year is called The Election by Don Zolitis, which is a satirical comedy over methods of political campaigning. The play specifically follows the story of Mark Davenport and his objective to win the student body president election of his high school. And I chose it because we are in the dead heat of a landmark uh, as far as personality wise election, uh, obviously with, with Trump and Clinton. Uh, the comedy hits on any aspect of any election. This is Carol's yearly annual fall play, which is independently set up by students in the drama club, headed by the drama teacher, Steve Pearson. All the lights, the sound. There is a tech class, a tech theater class, who is training to do it as well, and some veterans from, from tech classes before, but some people are just plain interested in painting or set building or whatever you see on stage is obviously drama club and the actors as well. The cast will include students from every grade level, including Luke Stamets, Allison Bitters, Seth Pendergrass, Liam Hickey, and Hannah Harper as the main cast. Some of the performers involved are new to being part of a live performance, even including one of the leading roles. It benefits me definitely because I'm, I've been into acting for a couple years now and this is the first like live performance I've ever done and it's definitely helped me out as an actor. The performance is open to students, faculty, family, and anyone else interested in seeing the performance. I would recommend for everybody to see this play because it's going to be the most funny one yet. The admission cost for the fall play would be $5, with the exception of any students who happen to be a part of Mr. Pearson's theatrical classes. Seth, Studio 415 reporter, your time after my time. It's my time. This has been Seth Pennegrass with Studio 415. I'm sorry. There were many new additions to the staff of Carroll High School for the 2016 and the 2017 school year. One of these new faces has joined the science department in the freshman center. I had the opportunity to learn more about him and hear his story. CHS Studio 415 would like to introduce you to Nathan Hartman. New freshman biology teacher Nathan Hartman graduated from DeKalb High School in 2006 where he was an active member of the school's music programs, consecutively winning the school's best marcher. When he wasn't playing the saxophone, Hartman could be found hitting the books. The lover of learning went on to study science at Purdue University. I think science is great in that it allows us, it's a tool that we can use to search for, for truth. Hartman then graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Cell Molecular and Developmental Biology in 2010. Upon graduating college, Hartman worked at Baker College in Michigan as a residence hall director. Involvement with these students influenced Hartman to move forward and become a teacher. Uh, but decided that moving forward I want to make sure that I kept that involvement with the students whereas if I'd stayed in the administrative role at the college I would have had less and less student interaction as I went on. With Indiana Wesleyan's online transition to teaching program and some student teaching at East Noble, the science lover found himself landing a position at Carroll. The new teacher claims that although Carroll is much larger than the prior high schools he has been involved with, the kind students and staff have made it nothing but welcoming. It's a little bit different, but being here at the Freshman Center, I kind of get that kind of almost small school feeling where you kind of get to know a lot of people pretty well. Um, but overall, it's been really positive, and so are those. I mean, the other teachers and the students have been really great been able to develop some relationships there. Hartman and his wife of three years settled down in Fort Wayne prior to his recent employment. However, his new job at a closely located school has been nothing but exciting for the couple. For Studio 415, I'm Caroline Chastain. Carroll High School has two stores inside of its walls, the Charger Game Day store and the Charger Corner. Located in the Commons, the Charger Corner hasn't been able to open up and serve students their popular coffee and cappuccino. Studio 415 reporter Darcy Fosnoff spoke with the store's leaders to find out how the store is operated and when the doors will open. Ray Wardell teaches the entrepreneurship class which has operated the school store for over six years. The school store is run by a combination of students and business teachers. About 100 to 120 students visited the store every week last year. Wardell and business teacher Ryan Taylor hope that even with the time change, they can still continue to meet staff and students' needs. On the day, you know, you're coming to school, you're late, you're rushing, you know, do your hair and get all that stuff taken care of. 
you know, you can come in, you know, pay a dollar, get a cup of coffee, and you're good to go for the rest of the day. The premise behind the school store is to give students and staff an opportunity to get anything they might need to start off the school day. Consumers can buy anything from breakfast foods to batteries for a calculator for a reduced price. In the morning, they can get a cappuccino. If they've missed breakfast at home, they can grab uh, a Pop-Tart, they can grab uh, a muffin. Um, again, all school supplies. If you need lead, we sell lead. Uh, we sell pencils. We sell all the, all the stuff. Due to the later bus arrival, the Charger Corners opening is still unknown. Many of the students helping out with the store are excited to learn the ways of managing and helping out in a real business scenario. Some of the roles include managing money and helping out customers who come into the store. Even though there is no definite date for the opening of the school store, Wardell hopes to get started serving the people of Carroll High School very soon. For Studio 415, I'm Darcy Fosnoff. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any story ideas that you would like to see covered, mention them to any of the students in the credits or Mr. Johnston. For all of us here at Studio 415, have a great homecoming week, Carol.